Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexandre. You can call me Alex. I'm a tech evangelist for Latin America. You can also find me on Twitter, AlexDevBR. Today, I'm going to talk about create landscapes and terrain faster using Unity terrain tools. First, let's overview our topics for today. In Unity package, I'm going to talk and show you what packages I'm using for terrain tools and some samples that can get you started. In our live demo, I created a prototype we are going to check about terrain toolbox. There's some new cool brushes that can help you to create your terrain, some mask filters where you can use to speed up your creation. We're going to see how to paint textures using the layer system, uh, how holes work in our terrain tools. Uh, we are going to see also some trees and details, which are pretty much the same that we uh, uh, saw in the past. I mean, the previous versions of our terrains. And also I'm creating some, I created some scripts where we can check how you can maybe create some gameplay and interact with your terrains. After that, we're going to see more on world building, what is coming for your you know, terrain creations and more about level design. So our terrain tools, it's working since 19.1. That means if you're using 19.1 and forward, you can pretty much download and start creating. We have also some nice samples available that you can download directly from an asset store. And it comes with some brushes, some textures and layers, uh, and some other cool assets that can get you started. This terrain tools also works with high definition render pipeline and the universal render pipeline. This 16 bit support to single channel textures means that now we can have a uh, much better quality with your textures in your terrain. And um, we also support multiple terrains. That means you can you know, get a big map and split up to smaller terrains, uh, or you can just connect smaller to a big one. It will all connect seamlessly. The Neighbor Terrain tools will also help you with that. Then we have brush and layer improvement. Um, that means we have different brushes that you can just use to uh, speed up your creation. You, have, uh, you can create different meshes in your terrain. We're going to see a bit about that. And the layers that you can use the textures and change those layers, create new ones, import, create some presets that, again, you just speed up uh, your terrain creation. And terrain holes, one of the most requested features, um, it will help you maybe you want to create some kind of cave, cave system. Um, you can pretty much paint holes in your terrain. And from that hole, you can connect some game objects, some props, and some other meshes to it. In our demo scene, um, I'm using, for our demo scene, I'm using Unity 19.3.8. Um, you can, of course, already download from Unity Hub. I'm also using Universal Render Pipeline. Some nice assets from Unity and some really cool assets from Polygon Ninja. You can find all these in Asset Store. The terrain tools, I'm using the version 3.0.1. You can download from the package manager. And also, I'm uh, using uh, multiple terrains all connected so you can see how it works. Let's take a look at the terrain toolbox. As you can see, we have four options um, um, on my right in the picture. Create new terrain, terrain settings, terrain utilities, and terrain visualization. The first one you can use to create your terrain, maybe a big one, maybe, I don't know, a big one split it in smaller pieces, and you can use tiles for that now. And they will connect together through the grouping ID, as you can see. So you can have uh, different terrain all connected, terrains all connected, and you can have multiple terrains all connected as well. In our terrain settings, you can set those uh, basic settings, mesh resolutions, texture resolutions, uh, all at once to all your terrains in your app, in your map that are connected. So this is very useful for working with multiple terrains that require the same settings. Instead of you going one by one um, as it was uh, it was before, now you can just select all the terrains you want and apply those settings in your scene. And also you can import or save those presets. So you can use later, or maybe you want to create a backup and use 
I don't know, from, for, for some other terrains in other scenes. Terrain utilities, you can use to split large terrains, or you maybe want to set new layer palettes that uh, you create in another scene, or just set up some new layers um, in a different terrain, and you can now just uh, import to all your terrains at once. You can import and export splat maps. So let's say if you design and paint an audio terrain, and maybe you want to use this splat map for any kind of gameplay or use inside your scripts, now you can already do that import and export. And same for hate maps. In the room visualization, as you can see in this quick video, you can change color based on altitude heat map. This is very useful. Maybe you have a big terrain and you want to set up some um, new cool places for your game and you want to see the difference per height. After you create your terrain, let's check um, how brushes work. We have some new cool options. Um, and also remember that you can download the samples from Asset Store and then you can get some of these brushes just to get it started. You can also create your own brushes later. So brush controls. As you can see, you have different options. You can pretty much rotate, increase or decrease size, strength, and also spacing when you're designing your level. We're going to see a bit of, about this when I show you the prototype demo. You also have some hotkeys. Remember that you can change those hotkeys inside Unity shortcuts window. Then you have those options of sculpting brushes, brush masks, and noise brush, where you can create and use some presets in your noise effect. Let's see some examples. So mesh stamp. Let's say you have some cool mesh, and you can pretty much use the, that mesh to stamp and uh, change this in your terrain. Is move height. You already know how it works. It, we had that in the previous versions of our terrain system. And one of the cool features, clone, as you can see, you pretty much can copy and paste the mesh in your terrain in the same one or in a different terrain. Some other examples, smudge, pinch, and twist. Some cool effects, especially on big maps. And some erosion brushes. One big set of addition is the erosion simulation brushes. There is hydraulic erosion, thermal erosion, and wind erosion brushes for creating corresponding erosion simulation effects on terrains, which is very cool. Hydraulic erosion simulates the effect on water flowing across the terrain surface and the transport of sediment along the water flow field. Thermal erosion simulates the effect of sediment settling on terrain at different angles. And finally, wind erosion simulates the effect of wind transporting and redistributing on the terrain. So all those effects can now be applied to your terrain using terrain tools. Let's see of some of these uh, erosion brushes running inside Unity. Here we're using the hydraulic erosion brush on a quite noisy terrain surface. This simulation depends on high resolution of terrain. So for highly detailed erosion features and the best results, we recommend using a terrain rate map resolution of 1025, I believe, or greater, which can be set in the terrain settings. Let's check another one. So this one is the thermal erosion tool. Different sediment types would naturally settle at specific slope angles. So this tool enforces such an angle on the terrain uh, height field, resulting in natural looking slopes. So then you have this nice uh, melting effect. And then we have the wind erosion tool. As you can see, um, wind erosion will create some realistic looking sand dunes or snow dunes. One neat feature of this brush is you can visualize the direction of the wind in Cineview and change it by the hotkey for brush rotation. So you can pretty much choose the rotation of the wind, and then you can simulate and create these really nice effects. So after checking um, some of the brushes we have um, available in Unity, let's check these mask filters. So these filters will be very useful when you want to, um, let's say you want to paint some detailed part of your terrain, or you just want to pick um, a height or a slope 
and not paint anything else. So you can do that by selecting some of these options. So we can pretty much add and combine filters. And then you can use this, um, all this, uh, the brush tool, noise effects, erosion more to combine with the filters. You have some map operations and some terrain based operations like height and slope. We're going to see an example in the demo really soon. And then painting textures. When you create a new terrain, now we have some uh, layer options to add in your terrain. So these layers works as pretty much as the textures, which you have in the previous versions of uh, the terrain system inside Unity. But now with layers, you can pretty much modify the order. So let's say you have grass in the first layer, and then, I don't know, sand texture in the second one. You can pretty much change this order, and it will change instantly in your terrain. We're going to see that too in, in our demo. And as you can see, you have uh, full control over it. You can use the brushes on it, you can pretty much change uh, the strength, direction, and the size when you paint your terrain. And you can add many more options than before with the previous versions of uh, the unit terrain. You can control uh, texture per layer. You can pr pretty much create any palette you want, save it, and use in other terrains. You can also use some hotkeys so we can switch layer inside your scene for fast prototype or creation. And as I told you, you can combine filters for different effects. So really easy, pretty cool. Let's see some of this in action. So here you can see we're going to select a noise filter. Then we have already some textures on it. We're going to change how we control this noise. So you can pretty much change the strength. Remember that can, you can save it and load uh, uh, other noise effects. Yeah, so here you can paint pretty much same way as before. But now with filters, as you can see, we're adding some power to it. And it paint according to our noise filter. So maybe you want to add some more power, but instead of one of the parts, you want to change the part of the noise you're painting. Really cool. But also, you can use terrain-based filters. So here, let's paint part of our terrain. But now, I want to paint just some slopes of it. Or so some of, uh, let's say, an angle of my slope in my, my terrain. And change also some height effect. I mean, some height numbers. You can have some really neat results. Really cool. So imagine combining all these features to get some nice effects, but also speed up your creation. Usable not only for big terrains, but also smaller ones. you can prototype really fast. And creating holes. So this, as I told you, was a highly requested feature. Now we pretty much, you have your terrain mesh, but also now we can create holes to it. In this picture, I created a hole in the middle of my terrain. It's pretty much like painting a texture. So with your left mouse button, just hold, you're going to create holes based on the size of the brush. But also you can delete these holes by holding control while painting. It works very similar to the trees and details data. This works as a max texture, but also it will move the collider on it. So it's pretty simple. It works as ex expected. Next, we're going to see something about trees and details. So we have the tree tool and also the details tools, where uh, detail to where you can paint uh, you know, grass and some detail meshes. Both are unchanged compared to the previous unit version. So it works uh, the same way in your old terrain as this new one. And as you can see on these two pictures on your right, 
you can add and remove trees per brush size. So you can paint depending on the brush, adding as many trees as you want. Some settings for height density and more can be customized as you see fit. Also, if you don't want to place one by one or just a few uh, trees on your scene by brush size, you can just hit a button and mass place trees on each of your terrain. Another cool feature is that it works really well is the billboarding. So imagine have all these trees, I don't know, dozens, hundreds, thousands of trees. You can, uh, Unity Terrain will automatically apply billboarding on these trees for you. So really good for performance and you have those cool trees at the background of your scene. Also, you can create some custom trees. So there are two options. One is the Speed Tree Modeler from IDV. It already support uh, our Speedball Render Pipeline. So High Definition Render Pipeline and the Universal Render Pipeline that I explained before. Another one is the Tree Creator. It's really good. It's inside Unity 19, but sadly, it's not supported on Universal Render Pipeline. Another thing is if you want to delete those trees, you can just hold Control while painting. So instead of you know just painting trees, hold Control and it will delete the ones uh, where your brush is. And the details tools, which is also unchanged compared to the previous version of Unity Terrains. So you can add those details as a billboard or normal meshes. So as billboard is pretty much a, a texture that we apply on the terrain, so it can pretty much create the grass effect. But also you can add the mesh details, which are just meshes you can paint on your terrain. And also it will work together with the billboarding and the distance that will fade in and fade out automatically for you. You can control over, uh, all this of which height, density, and color. So really cool, really simple. It works as expected in our previous versions. And uh, as always, optimization for density and distance will save you some nice performance. And uh, finally, using scripts. So I'm, I'm not going to show the entire scripts that I'm using in the project just the ones that explain where we are checking about removing grass or changing the texture in real time. We have some nice effects, some, uh, um, let's say, rocks that we are going to instantiate and where they hit in on terrain, it's going to change texture and remove the grass. So this script also works on previous versions of Unity. So if you want, try to find me on my Twitter and maybe I can share some of these scripts for you. You can also change this texture per layer, and uh, it's a function-based texture and position, so it can pretty much call from any other script. So really useful, really nice, and it shows just an example uh, how you can pretty much change this in real time. So let's see our demo scene, uh, the project that uh, will be created to show what we just saw for the terrain tool features. So we're gonna just check some brushes, how we paint textures, how we change the terrain, or how we change the meshes on multiple terrains. And then uh, I'm going to show how the scene was created. Okay, this is our scene. Let me move here. Okay, as you can see, we have, it's not that big terrain in this case, but uh, I want to show uh, an easier way for you to see the whole picture. So, first off, with the terrain toolbox, remember that you can go to window, terrain toolbox but for that of course you need to download from the package manager here okay and uh, um, you can download the asset samples from the asset store clicking this button since i already have i'm not going to click and in the terrain toolbox the first option create new terrain here i set some uh, i set my width my length and then how many tiles i wanted so i did this so now i have four terrains and you can see it's all connected in this uh, grouping ID. And because of that, if I select this one, um, let me get a brush mask. And you can see, uh, oh, before the painting texture, let me select sculpt, noise. And since I have, uh, uh, because I have this brush mask, this is how I, how I make brushes uh, um, this format. And using hot case S D to rotate A to increase strength, you can see already the change is being applied in my terrain. So this is the same as changing here the stroke option. And since my terrains are all connected, 
you can see that when I, when I paint, it already connect those terrains. So really useful if you want a big map and connect all these terrains together. Okay, before checking the uh, terrain utilities, let's go back to here very quickly. So um, let me select this terrain again. We just saw how we can sculpt using the, the noise effect, but let's see how we can clone something. Let me, yeah, unselect this brush. I just hold control, left click, and now I have a copy of that mountain. The, I don't know, maybe I want to paste it here. Really usable brush. Let's check another one. Terrace. So this one, let's say if I want to create some different mountains here. Yep. Cool. And remember what we saw about the erosion. So let's check the hydraulic. Oh. And thermal brush. So let's melt some of this mountain. And then wind. Remember that we can choose the direction of the wind. Yep, I know I'm not an artist. Um, this part is not, it's not going to be really uh, a bad, really. Okay, after some of this, you know, uh, some of these uh, uh, brushes, remember that pretty much go uh, test yourself, uh, experiment some of these values. It's really nice. So then you can, you know, uh, have some nice results. Let's see how my painting texture works. So remember that I can access the brush mask. I have some my filters that I'm going to check uh, um, later. And I have all uh, these two options, material and layers. So material, I'm using the default one that comes uh, with the render pipeline. You can create your own and set it here. I'm not going to do that now. And the uh, layers, I already have some, some layers set. If you want, you can go here, create your own layer. It will add here for you after you select some texture to it. But let me select this one and you can see the texture that you selected on the diffuse map. Okay, so um, painting just worked as, as expected, but um, let me select another brush. Yeah. Yeah, I painted my mouth and it's okay. But uh, let's say if I want to change this, maybe this order. Oh, maybe this one. I have, yeah, similar grass effects here, but maybe I want this one. Okay, now you can set all these different orders. It's really useful if you want to try, you know, different values to uh, uh, check on your terrains, how it, will look, how it will look like. Okay, pretty simple. Just, again, test some, some of these effects. And um, yeah, let's see how it works on my terrain utilities here. By utilities, I mean um, you have all these options here. So imagine uh, uh, you can see you can duplicate and split your terrains. I'm not going to do that. Mine is already splitted. You can pretty much change all your uh, layers in a palette for all your terrains at once. Here I only have four, but uh, imagine that you have hundreds. I don't know. You don't want to go here one by one, change palette by palette, layer by layer. You can just go here and apply to all your terrains at once. Same for um, terrain splat maps. You can import and export your splat maps from your terrain. Oh, here's the option to export. And same for height maps. So, um, oh, you, you, you can also import different height maps you know, for your terrain. So if you use an external tool or you can just um, save a heat map and import here. It's really good if you don't want, you know, to design your all your terrain uh, inside Unity. I mean, the height map. And um, terrain visualization. This one is really cool. So if we go here, you can see my whole scene. Let me select out to the heat map. 
and you can see here that I already uh, set some of these levels so it's based on height and some of these colors so you can go here into the scene and see that it will paint according to the settings you choose here in the your terrain toolbox really cool so we check it all these um, these options here um, creating the terrain, the settings, utility, visualization, some of uh, how it works. And uh, before showing more of what we could what, what we could do here, some of these details that you already know is not something new. Let's see how the scene works, how we created the scene. So for this, let me go back here a little bit. Oops. Here. There's a hole in there. I'm going to explain that later. And um, let me mix mice here. You're going to see some of these game objects are just disabled. So let me hit play. First thing is you can see I only have my background. Okay, my skybox. So first, let's see. This is my terrain, and this is this the my uh, camera position that I wanted to um, just to to test um, a set of my of my scene next some some clips you know from the amazing art from polygon ninja and you can see here the objects that i'm turning on and off so next one is some objects so this really nice temple uh, objects some other props on it. Let's add some trees to my scene. You know, some rocks on my ground. Um, some foliage. You know, just some small details. Some VFX. As you can see, these are particles. my cave here so before we only had let me remove this so i can show you again we all have our hole here in our terrain as you can see and as i explained before you pr it pretty much pretty much um work as a mask filter so what i did is i painted this i removed the mesh also it removes the collider and then I just wanted, I just added some props to it. You know, so maybe later we can create, you know, the player go into our cave. Next, I'm uh, applying some post processing to the scene. As you can see here, these are the effects that are, um, that are turning on. And then some nice uh, hate fog. Okay, of course, this is uh, for my taste. Maybe you want something different. Maybe you want some different colors. Um, I just want to show how the scene was created and how it was set. Um, let me remove all this and go back to my terrain. So this is uh, how our scene was created. Oh, one thing I forgot. Let me go back to the scene and uh, hit play again so remember that i told you that um, i had a script and um, um, i created to show some of the some of the interaction that we could we could have with our terrain system so here i'm going to hit return and i'm going just to instantiate some, uh, not an object okay so as you can see, the rock is now destroyed, but when I instantiate this rock, as soon as it touches the ground, it will paint the ground for this dirty texture. And then also it will move the grass. So let me create um, some more rocks here. You see that now I I've painted it a little bit, but I also 
remove it part of my grass. So yeah, we can achieve this through scripting. I'm going to show you how I did that. Let me hit the play again. And let's check our script terrain utilities. So here we have one of our scripts. Okay. Um, it's a simple script. It's not something, you know, too fancy. It, it has everything that we need to access our terrain data and to get um, um, our grass, our details from our terrain and also the textures. So I just, here I created a single tone so I could access from all the script. Uh, here I have an option because if I made changes to my terrain, um, even if I'm in real time, it will save since it's an external data, okay? So it will save even in play mode. So if I don't want that to happen, I, I need to, I just created a boolean, um, a, a, a bool variable that I can just restore my previous thing. I have a backup on this. So this is just for my terrain, uh, my backup to work. This is to make sure my singleton will work. This is my backup process. So pretty simple. If I check if I have a file, if it does, um, I'm going to restore my data, which is pretty much let me get back my collider, my textures, my trees, my grasses, um, everything that I need to uh, get my terrain back again. Okay, I'm not going to use that in this uh, in this talk. So here is where part of uh, the magic with painting textures happens. So what I need to know is the position where my object is going to be. So that's why here I have a set target. This is the object that I'm using, which in, in this case, it's the rock. This is the paint grid size, which is the area of the painting that I'm going to do and change for the dirty texture. This is the number of texture. In this case, um, I made like this because I, I don't know how many textures my thing terrain has. Maybe it will have one terrain we have, I don't know, four, another one we have five. These are the number of layers that I have in my terrain. And here the texture idea I wanted to change. So if I want a grass texture, I just set the ID here when I call this guy. Here I'm getting my terrain data and um, here I want the, you know, the the size that I wanted to paint on my terrain. Then I'm going to check, okay, um, what, what, what is the size I'm going to paint here on, uh, on the pixels on my map? And here, okay, I have the position. Let me just fix the position here. Uh, so it will not be exactly on one of the points of my object set here in my transform. Then I'll get um, my position where I am in my terrain. And then I'll change my, uh, my maps in my terrain data. This is where I can change the texture where my object is touching the ground. So it's simple um, and you can use this. So maybe if you have a, I don't know, um, a real time strategy game and you place um, a building and you want to change the texture. So it's possible like this way. Of, of course, there are better ways to increase performance here. So I'm just using for testing purpose. And this other one, uh, remove grass. Instead of me painting, I'm going to check what details I have on the position that I'm touching around. And um, based on this position, I'm going to remove any details that I have on that point. Okay, here, so uh, here I try to get uh, the size, the radius of the, the, the region that I want to remove. And then I'm saving this in my array. 
and then I'm getting all my layer in my detail area as you can see here remember you can check this also in unity documentation here I'm checking um, okay where is my detail and uh, let's replace it let's remove it and let's set all my map and my detail layer so this is why it's a bit expensive so there are better ways to do it and again i'm just doing this for testing purpose and um, to call to tell the rock to destroy itself and also to paint or remove the grass let's go back to our project and let me open the script rock destroyer and you can see here that's again it's a simple script and i'm even checking on collision enter okay um am i touching the ground i create a tag with uh where i call ground and then i just call my term utilities okay paint the texture where i am um this is my area to destroy the size of the area how many textures i have in my terrain and which texture i wanted to paint it to be painted and here just remove the grass so that is what we're doing here in the script let me go back to my scene and this is one of the ways you can use scripts to interact with uh, your terrain uh, it can be texture it can be the details that we have here and uh, these are the details that i'm talking about so these are um you know the grass option that I have, that I have here. Uh, I don't want it uh, to paint uh, a lot at this moment. So we saw some of these options, how it works, and again, just download it, try yourself. There are a lot of uh, really nice options for you to design your own terrain. Uh, we do have more materials on our YouTube page um some uh, different also tutorials where i can just you know try yourself uh, see the results try again it's really nice to work with one other thing i forgot let me disable this guy here and go back here and we have a hole in our scene so let me select this terrain and let me click on paint rolls paint holes and as you can see it's just painting you, do, you don't need to do something really something else I can change the size and if I hold control I can pretty much erase the hole that I did before okay these are just some you know some props that I created here um, so we can you know simulate this cave entrance okay um yeah uh, i believe this is it for our demo scene uh there are many options here that i'm i'm pretty sure you're all familiar with uh we had in our previous uh terrain versions let's go back to the slide because i want to show one final thing about what what we're doing what is coming for uh world building inside unity i index the slides um this is it for our demo scene we checked some um, cool features like the brushes um, textures for layers uh, the multiple terrains so um, remember download terrain tools uh, download our samples from the asset store experiment those all these features yourself we're going to see it's very simple and i'm pretty sure you you will create some really nice environments with it but uh, i also want to talk what's more coming for world building inside unity we already released a um, basic in an engine 3d mesh all terrain so provider and polybrush work in prototype scenes really fast you can also create some different meshes using it we also released the terrain tools um, I just showed some of these features. With these terrain tools, you can create uh, different environments, different uh, you know terrains all connected. We also have an improved unit editor, not only performance, but uh, UI uh, got some really cool 
upgrades, updates, sorry. But what's more coming? We have a new C sharp based environment with non destructive layer based workflow, as you can see in this video on your right. So, uh, this environment, um, we have a team dedicated on it, and we're going to have more news it's still on 2020. So, stay tuned and remember to check our unit roadmap. Um, you can see on this link. And of course, if you want to learn more, remember to check our Learn web page. Um, there are tons of tutorials in there. We have our unit experts in live sessions. We have many different courses, uh, including terrain editor courses in there. Uh, if you're an artist, if you're a programmer, um, if you're a game designer, Unity is for everyone. It, it, it can be for gaming or any other very cool. So be sure to check the page. I'm sure you're going to find what you're looking for. And um, well, this is it for this talk. Thank you very much for staying here with me. I hope you're safe. I hope you're um, feeling very well. Uh, please find me on Twitter, alex.pr. Let's stay connected. And I believe we'll have some questions, uh, some Q&A soon. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Cheers.